I am so excited to introduce you today to Jamel Gibbs. Jamel Gibbs is a successful real estate entrepreneur. He's done over 2,000 real estate deals. He has a successful business and he is going to share everything that he knows with us today. I cannot wait for you to learn and hear all of what Jamel has to say and hear how similar our stories are in so many ways and how we climbed from the bottom and got to the top. I cannot wait for you to hear all of the gems that will be shared today. Let's go. Noel. Yeah, she can fix that. If you gotta get it done, no, you need to do it better. Well, she can fix that. Yeah, she can fix that. Investment to get back, trying to get a big stack. She can fix that. Let's fix that. Welcome, welcome. I am so happy to introduce the world to Jamel Gibbs, who is a brilliant real estate coach. He's a real estate entrepreneur, a real estate investor, and just an all-around awesome guy that I am so happy to be introducing to you guys on my YouTube show. Welcome, welcome, Jamel Gibbs. How are you? I'm doing great, Noel. How are you today? I am awesome. I am awesome. So we are going to get right into it because I know you have just so much information to share. You are a wealth of knowledge, and I am so excited for you to tell your real story so that people can see what success looks like, especially in the realm of real estate investing and then real estate coach. Okay. So we're going to be talking about that very specifically. So tell people who you are and kind of how you got started in this business. Sounds good. Uh, well, first off, I appreciate you having me on the show. Uh, my name is Jamel Gibbs. I grew up in uh, Brooklyn, New York. I've been investing in real estate since 2002. Uh, over the years, I've done very well in real estate, but I've also had some hits as well. Uh, in addition to my hits, uh, that is what caused me to become who I am today. I believe the things that you experience in life make you the person you are. So ultimately, the ups and downs that I've experienced in real estate over the last 20 years, uh, 19 years at this point, has helped me to become a, a better real estate investor, a better leader, a better coach all the way around. Uh, since uh, 2002, I've bought a couple thousand houses. And uh, I still buy at least two houses every single day right now. Uh, and we do that through what's called wholesaling real estate, as well as creative real estate investing strategies, such as uh, subject to investing, wraparound mortgages, lease options, seller financing types of deals. Uh, over the years, I've, I've also built new construction, done rehabs. I've touched just about every aspect of the real estate business, but I find my comfort is in wholesaling and creative investing. Uh, so that's a, that's a 20 year story in about 30 seconds. So we're gonna dive into that because you and I connected so much on the wholesaling, the subject to the wraparound mortgages. That is how I found success in real estate and how I amassed a portfolio of real estate. So let's dive into that a little bit because you again are a wealth of knowledge. Explain to people how you built your portfolio using these creative strategies. Let's tell them what they are and then how you did it. You know, when I first started, I was using something what they call the burn method today. So I would buy a house, I would fix it up, I would do what's called a refi cash out, meaning I would pull the money that I invested back uh, out of the property and then I would simply rent the property or do what's called a rent to own, uh, AKA a lease option on a property. And I did that a lot between 2002 to 2006, 2007, uh, until the market tank. Now, unfortunately, like I said, I had a, a lot of downs at that time as well, primarily because I had a lot of money out. I had a lot of uh, money invested into different properties. And when that market tank, I couldn't get the money back out of it. So unfortunately, my business took a huge, huge hit. So this is where wholesaling was introduced to me. Now, for those of you who don't know what wholesaling is, is basically uh, the act of contracting a property at a huge discount with the intentions of selling it at a discount uh, to make a small profit. So to give you an example of that, you know, I can, uh, let's say a house was worth $100,000. I can contract that property for, let's say, $30,000, uh, provided it needs some type of work, physical distress, or financial distress, and then I can turn around and sell the contract 
to someone else for forty thousand or fifty thousand dollars. Yes. So stop here. Stop here. I need you to stop here because this is literally okay. where we connected so much. And this is how I got out of my parents' basement. So let me quickly share share with you how me and Jamel's stories they mirror each other. So. I start investing in Atlanta, 2002, 2003. I'm flipping houses with a full-time job. 2008, 2009 comes, we go bankrupt. We have multiple foreclosures. We overpay for properties. We find out all of our mistakes, basically. And yep. we end up back in my parents' basement, okay? Me, my husband, my kids. At the time, I was pregnant with my third kid, okay? So I'm living in my parents' basement. I'm humiliated. I don't understand how this happened to me, okay, Jamel? I'm just like, how did I end up in my parents' basement again after being able to flip houses a little bit? So I go and I get, I start going to real estate investor meetings, okay? And I meet a guy and he ends up being my coach and teaches me wholesaling. He teaches me wholesaling. He says, go find people with property problems, people like you that were behind on their mortgage payments, but let's get them before they go into foreclosure. Explain to them what happens in a foreclosure. You know, the sheriff come, he kick you out the house. They don't want that. Sell the house to us investors and tell them you're connected to this network investors. You know, he gave me this little script and voila, I'm doing those deals, 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, because that's what he told me to charge, okay? Just being honest with you. I only thought you could charge 5,000 when you wholesale. I, I didn't know what I know now. <laughs> and we'll get into that in a little bit, but I only charged 5,000, but I did like 13 deals the first year. And of course, that's how I got out of my parents' basement. And I just started building my wealth, being able to fix my credit, being able to pull myself out of that situation through wholesaling. So Explain to people the power of just knowing how to find off-market properties and how to talk to these sellers. Well, you know, I look at real estate like this, especially when it comes to wholesaling. But wholesaling kind of drags itself into other aspects of real estate as well. So I look at it as uh, when it comes to wholesaling, I'm a marketer first. I got to know how to find the deals. So what type of deals are we looking at? We're looking for uh, deals with some type of distress attached to it again. It could be physical distress. Financially, distress can tie into the creative investing side. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But for the, for the most part, really, what you're looking to do is look for distress. So if you're driving around in a neighborhood, any pick a neighborhood in your, in your local area, drive around a neighborhood and look for the eyesore. That's the distressed property. You contact that seller and ultimately you get in touch with them. You can take that distress off of their backs and create a profit while you're doing it. So that's uh, basically what we're looking for. You're a marketer first, then a problem solver. So you heard me say that I can take the distress off of the seller's back, right? In essence, what we're doing is we're creating uh, a situation where uh, the seller doesn't need to uh, uh, take care of that property anymore. And they're looking to get rid of the property. And at the same time, we can provide them with the solution to get rid of the property. And that's where we materialize ourselves as real estate investors. So you're a marketer first, a problem solver second, and then a real estate investor when you materialize that check at the end of the day. Okay, I had to stop and do a breakaway and talk to you about this because wholesaling is absolutely the best way to get into real estate investing when you have bad credit and no money. Both me and Jamel Gibbs have realized that and we made a ton of money wholesaling real estate. Jamel still does way more of it than I do today. But here is the catch. When I started investing in real estate and doing wholesaling, my coach taught me that I should charge $5,000 per deal. So that was all I ever charged for over a year, no matter how much equity, how much room, how much work I did, I always charged $5,000 as a max. Now, here is the lesson that you now know. You get to set your fees. When it comes to real estate investing, wholesaling, fixing and flipping, and some of these other things where you control your pay, you can create your own fee. You get to decide what it is that you are charging for your service. Wholesaling is an absolutely amazing concept in real estate and you can make 
hundreds of thousands of dollars. You do not have to only charge $5,000 per deal. That was the mistake that Noel made and you will not make that same mistake. Now back to this. This goes into the next thing, because you said we're going to get into some creative financing. But before we get into that, we have to tell them because they, they're seeing it, they're hearing it, how you got into coaching, you know, how you went from doing it, you know, like same like you and I, we learned about it, then we did it. And now we're coaching and teaching others so that yeah. we can share our knowledge. So talk about how you became a business coach, how you became a real estate coach. Between 2002 and 2006, I was at the peak. Uh, come around 2004 to 2006, I was at the peak of my real estate uh, business at that time. Since then, I've obviously surpassed what I've been able to accomplish back then. But I'm in my mid-20s, and I had a realtor come to me, and I was well-known in Pennsylvania because uh, I lived in Pennsylvania for eight years. I didn't mention that part. Uh, but while I was in Pennsylvania, uh, I was well-known because I was buying a lot of houses. So here's this young guy buying up pretty much every single deal that came on the market. And I had a realtor come to me and said, I'll pay you to show me how you do what you do. Now this is a realtor right. who said that to me. Yeah. yeah. And I basically, a light bulb went off in my head and I said, you know what? I, I need to learn how to write a book. And then from the book, it kind of segued into uh, home study courses and coaching and things like that. So I've been training people in real estate. I've created multiple millionaires uh, in real estate since 2006. I know you and, have. Um, <laughs> and since then, you know, I've been I've been growing my education platform as well. It's funny because I, I know you you have created millionaires. And like I said, in that, that is why you are, you know, almost this unsuspecting rich guy. You know what I mean? You're kind of unassuming, but you've created value. You've created wealth for others and created millionaires. So I get I was recently asked this question. I'm going to ask you this question. I was recently asked how to make a million dollars a month in real estate. How would you answer that question? To me, the, the best way to make a million dollars a month is to do it through passive income. And obviously, there's a lot of different moving parts to real estate. Uh, wh what I believe that people need to focus on is building their capital through wholesaling, but then taking that capital and investing in the cash flowing properties. If you can invest in the cash flowing properties and you get uh, over time, you can get larger with the unit. So you can go from, let's say, a, a one to a four family a residential style property to more commercial, small apartments, five to 20 units. And then over time, you build that to 100 units and 200 units. I believe within three to five years, anybody can make a million dollars a month uh, in real estate. I agree. I absolutely love that. And you also brought out a great point to explain what I, I'm often trying to teach. And I think every real estate you know, millionaire, we've, we've, we, we know that you have to deal compound. So you start with wholesaling to get the cash flow. And then you may go to fixing and flipping now that you have a little bit of cash and you have some that you can risk because fixing and flipping is more risky than wholesaling. But now you have some cash flow and then you get your rental properties and you start to keep some of those properties that you would have, you know, that instead of wholesaling off and getting rid of it, you're like, no, I'm going to keep this one and add it to the portfolio. So you're right. You, you start to easily go from getting cash to cash flow. And, and you know what the problem is? People, uh, you know, they'll, they'll look at the, They have shiny object syndrome is what we call it in a business. Right. So what people do is they'll get this check for five or ten thousand dollars and the next thing you know, that check is gone. Rather than reinvesting that fun that money into something that's going to cash flow for them to where they can live off of the cash flow versus the, the uh, seed money, uh, that's where people go wrong, in my opinion. I made that mistake myself. You know, so I used to uh, buy any and everything that I wanted because I was making fifty, hundred thousand dollars $100,000 a month in my mid-20s, right? Yeah. Now, what I learned is because I didn't have enough assets when the market tank my business i went bankrupt yeah in 2008 2009 just like you you know the story right so uh what i learned from that was i need more cash flowing assets so if anything was to ever happen guess what i'm still going to be financially set because i have money coming in so i take the seed money from uh uh things like wholesaling and fix and flip and i put it in a cash flowing properties and I live off of the investments, not the, the seed money. 
And actually, this is another awesome point. So not only do you have your properties, okay, that are cash flowing, you wholesale or you fix and flip some of them for large lump sums of cash. So we're creating multiple streams of income. And then we add to it, once we get proficient, of course, the coaching and the teaching. And that has been an amazing stream of revenue for my business. What, what, would, you, what would you say for yours? It's fantastic. I, I'll tell you, I just did a, um, I'm not trying to give a shameless plug or anything like that, but I just, I literally just did a video on the multiple streams of income that I have coming in just from the real estate aspect of my business. We're not talking about, you know, other aspects like trucking companies and things like that, that we have just from real estate. I have 11 streams of income. So the coaching is one aspect of the real estate business where we teach people. And yes, it, it is a seven figure business uh, right now. Uh, and at the end of the day, I believe that anybody with some type of specialized knowledge can take their knowledge and turn it into money, a uh, continuous flow of money for themselves if they're consistent with putting out uh, value to the world. Yes, I, I completely agree, completely agree. So same thing here. And, and it's, it's like real estate is the core business. And I teach people about multiple streams of income. You create that core, you know, and that could be your real estate rental properties. And then you have the wholesaling. Then you have the fix and flips. Then you have the podcast. Then you have the book. Then you have the coaching. Then you have the courses. And it really does just build as you grow your business and your revenue streams grow. Would, would you say that's the same thing that you believe in and that you teach? Absolutely. So I've turned real estate, say, for, for example, wholesaling, rental income. I've turned into an email list of several hundred thousand people where I can uh, provide them with real value uh, about real estate. And then I can in turn offer products and services to them uh, because I'm providing that value. Then we have YouTube and then we have software and coaching programs and uh, boot camps and all kinds of things that all was a spinoff of what we were able to accomplish in real estate. So yeah, you can take one aspect of the business and create multiple streams of income so that when one is slow, and I'm sure you, you'd agree with this yes, as well. absolutely. When one aspect of the business is slow, you still have revenue coming in from other aspects and vice versa. So right. you always have capital coming in. It's about building uh, uh, it's, it's about building value, providing value to the world like Noelle does on her channel. And then at the same time, uh, make it profitable, help people and the people will always help you. In yeah. the end. Yes. OK, Jamel Gibbs, because you, you are like dropping so many gems that we have like, OK, so let's kind of pivot a little bit because you're saying so much about business, okay? You're, you're, you're really teaching people about their business and how to create multiple streams of income in your business. And so talk to me about how you are as a business coach. What do you think it means to be a business coach? I think being a business coach all boils down to being a leader in your business. You don't really wanna, uh, in the beginning, you might have to work on the minutia part, meaning the ins and outs of the business, but over time you need to remove yourself and build up your team. And when I say build up, I'm talking about build them up uh, to the point where they're confident in themselves uh, to be able to handle the business better than you can. You have to remove yourself from the business in order for it to be considered a true business at the end. And I learned that over the years. It took me eight years to get my first hire. After that, right now, there's 21 of us on my team. And we have a meeting every single day, Noel. We do uh, Monday leadership calls, Tuesdays acquisitions, Wednesdays dispositions, Thursdays, marketing, Friday, admins, right? So that's kind of the way I stay in touch with my team every single day to make sure we're hitting the mark. We set a goal. We want to make sure that we're hitting that goal every single week. We have a big goal, let's say a five-year game plan, but every week is leading up to that five years. Right. So to be a business coach or business owner, you have to be a leader. And in order to be an effective leader, uh, you got to know when you're vulnerable and you also got to know when to remove yourself in order to allow your team to take over from there. Oh, it's funny because I feel like you and I are doing the same thing. We run a business and we're teaching what we do each day. So that's what makes the information so awesome because it's day to day. We have a team, we have employees. We're literally just giving you a behind the scenes look on our own businesses when we teach and we coach you. So I, I absolutely, I think you just said so many great points. So as a coach, because again, you're teaching, you have your business and then you're coaching others. What can a business coach help their students with? 
a business coach should be able to help their students, number one, get profitable. So what I do uh, when it comes to, let's say, wholesaling, for example, the first thing when uh, I, the first thing I want to accomplish when someone invests into my program, I want to help them to get a check as quickly as possible. Then what we want to do is we want to uh, rinse and repeat the entire process for, let's say, 12 months so that they can get an annual amount. So let's say that they make 60 grand a year. We want to put $60,000 in the bank. So then they have the choice of whether to scale and go full time or to continue doing it part time. But they have options at that point because they're cashed up. Right. So the number one thing is to get cashed up first uh, by doing your first deal. Then rinse and repeat the entire process till you have a year's worth of income in the bank. After that, sky is the limit. You can do whatever you want to do at that point. So, you know, what I, what I teach people at the end of the day is to number one, you know, uh, know what you want. So let's say in five years from now, you want to retire with $10,000 a month in income, get very specific, very clear on what you want. And then from there, we could create a game plan where we're creating annual uh, goals, which will lead up to the five years. Then we create quarterly goals, monthly goals, weekly goals, daily goals, which will ultimately help you to hit the game plan. I'm, I'm happy to jump into the nitty gritty on how to, how to do all of this stuff. You know, on, on what I recommend is uh, wholesaling and creative investing to be able to do that. Also utilizing business credit and things like that, which they can uh, get, get that type of information from you. But all of this can lead you to being financially free in a very short period of time. You could absolutely change your life yes, if yes. you just stick with the game plan for a couple of years, that's it. Whoa, okay, I had to stop and talk to you guys about business coaches because this is so important. One of the things that I absolutely love about business coaches is that if they currently have a business and they are working in their business and their business is successful, like the business that I wanted to have, that business coach is a wealth of information. They are currently doing what they are teaching you. They are in the day-to-day. -day. They have a team. They have employees. They're always looking for new technologies and new ways, and they share and pass that information on to their students. I feel like I got so successful so fast because my coaches, my business coach, taught me so many business methodologies, strategies, websites, and just so much that I was able to be successful and not make all the mistakes that I would have made on my own. A great business coach can save you years and is worth every penny. Okay, so you said two things when you're coaching your students that, you know, me and you have so many of the same philosophies. One is the first money that they get, reinvesting in themselves. So you have them save it. There's sometimes when I have the, the students fix their personal credit, okay? And because, okay, I have had hundreds of thousands of views on my video, how to, how to get business credit with bad personal credit. Because we, we're touching on business credit and we're gonna touch on that, but so many people have bad personal credit that it's really going to hinder them long-term that I need them to kind of get those issues tied up so we can really get to the wealth building things. Talk to me about that. What are your feelings on, on, on personal credit and then we'll get to the business credit. I 100% agree with that. And again, reinvesting into yourself uh, doesn't necessarily mean to save, it means reinvest. So reinvesting could be building your personal credit, building your business credit. Uh, I know that you teach how to uh, build business credit without having great personal credit. I think you need to build up some type of credit in order to be able to get access to the capital that you need in order to really be able to take your business to another level. Because ultimately, by not having access to the funds that you need for your business, it can take you a lot longer or you can work a little, you're going to work much harder than what you need to uh, let's say through wholesaling real estate, right? Uh, you can build capital through wholesaling real estate, but what if you were able to get to the goal by uh, of buying and holding real estate through business credit a lot quicker? Rather than uh, wholesaling your life away, you can build up a lot quicker by building your personal situation, building up your business credit and getting access to the capital to be able to purchase these properties. My point is, you have a lot more leg room, a lot more leeway when you have access to money. And there's certain things that you can skip. You can literally skip the curve, skip the learning curve, skip the line and catapult your business a lot quicker when you have access to funds. That's been my personal experience, at least. 
And I'm sure you probably have the same experience yourself as well. I do, I do. And so I absolutely love what you said about the biz, the personal credit and then you know, hitching that to business credit because so few of us, I think, really know about business credit and the power of getting hundreds of thousands of dollars in your business's name. And in fact, I have tons of videos, an entire playlist on my YouTube teaching this because I really feel like more people should know because this is like, this really catapults your business to the next level, like you said. So before we close out, I just have to say, tell people where they can find you, what you're working on, because they need to know Jamel Gibbs. You are an amazing real estate entrepreneur that more people should know. Well, I really appreciate that. And um, you know, again, we can, we can jump into a lot of the nitty gritty stuff if you want to. Um, you know, I'm happy to come back and do that as well. But for the most part, uh, if you want a, a, a ton of real value on real estate investing uh, regarding wholesaling, fix and flip, or creative real estate investing, uh, I do new construction as well, uh, visit my YouTube page, youtube.com slash Jamel Gibbs. Uh, there's tons of different playlists on different aspects of real estate. I put out a video, multi I'm not as active as Noel is. She puts out a video every single day. I'm trying to keep up myself. Uh, but it's, it's, it's inspiration for me uh, to put out at least four to five videos a week. So um, that's what I've been doing. Uh, believe it or not, Noel, man, you put the bug in my ear when we spoke, you know, not so long ago. And I've been cranking up my content. So I appreciate the uh, I world. The world needs to hear your message. You have some awesome yeah. information. I love some of your approaches, brother. I think more of us need to be learning, doing, and teaching, especially from a real perspective. So this has been That's an right. amazing time. I appreciate you so much. Okay, so did you absolutely love and hear all of what Jamel Gibbs shared? How he has been able to take all of these people from the absolute bottom and take them and teach them real estate, taught them how to build wealth, and shown them there is a different way to live your life and have your business. Jamel is an absolute inspiration in his business and how he coaches other people. He is a true testament to learn, do, teach. I hope you can reach out to Jamel on his channel at Jamel Gibbs on YouTube. He's also Jamel Gibbs, that's J-A-M-E-L Gibbs with two Bs on social media, all of the Instagram and including his podcast. This is Noel. I want to make sure that you have all of the resources, all of the tools and all of the knowledge that you need to be successful to your success.